Welcome to our live training session number 15, part five. In this video, we're gonna take a look at our cold start and warm up enrichment operation of our engine now that we've tuned our main fuel tables properly. We're gonna have a lot to learn, so let's jump into the live training session so we can get started. Welcome to our day two of our live training here with our eighth gen Civic Si. We're gonna be taking a specific look at the cold starting and the warm up enrichment and being able to evaluate them and seeing if we can adjust some things to maybe get a little bit better. So in the previous videos, we went in, we tuned our fuel, our ignition, and our cam angle tables, and we did that on a warm engine. So now the engine has been allowed to cool down overnight, so it's bone cold, and things will definitely change as far as the fuel demand. So we're gonna find that as it's warming up, it may be needing more fuel or less fuel, and we can evaluate that now that we have our main, fuels table, main fuel tables tuned. So that's gonna be always the most important thing. We wanna kind of ignore our fuel compensation tables when we have a colder coolant temps so that we can evaluate the performance here on our, our cold starting and know that when it's applying the modifiers, it's gonna be applying those modifiers to a warm, properly tuned uh, table, not going in and uh, going to have to deal with if we've done an injector rescale, or if we change displacement, or if we've uh, changed anything that would definitely require us to tune the main fuel tables. If we're trying to deal with the fuel compensation at the same time, that's gonna be throwing another factor into the mix that we really can't figure out. So we need to kind of strip layers off of the tune. And again, I let the engine warm up yesterday. I ignored the fuel compensation trims until today. So this is the point where you definitely wanna go ahead and start to take a look at this. So what we're gonna do here and just so we're very clear what we're gonna be looking for in editing, under calibration here, under our fuel, we're gonna find we have our coolant temp compensation. So this is the area that we're interested in taking a look at the performance and how it's gonna be reacting here now that we've, again, properly tuned the fuel tables in the warmed up state so we know that they're all dialed in. We're gonna find we have a low and we find a high compensation table. So we can see they're based on our coolant temp here. And in this situation, if we actually go here, let's go live. Well, you can see what our coolant temp is. Our coolant temp is 64 degrees. So if we go into our table here, it should be showing us right into that section, right where we're at. We can see where our blue cursor's at, between 44 and 71. And we can see we're much more focused here on the 71 degree uh, breakpoint. Right here, it's showing 1.5, and then here 20%. So there's a low and a high, depending on where we're operating at. Um, low is typically going to be for the columns one through three, and the high is gonna be the rest of the, the range of operation in the table. So we're gonna be adding here up to 20% compensation. Now we're not able to directly monitor what that compensation is being applied, um, but we know that it is gonna be applying something. So we're able to take a look at the air fuel when we fire this up, and get an idea if we need to make some changes to this compensation. We might find that it's gonna to be too rich. In that case, we need to back down the value. If it's too lean, we might need to increase the value. So it's pretty straightforward. It's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error. Now, a couple things that you need to be aware of. Um, when you fire off the engine, you're gonna be finding that our wideband here for the first